Hello, everybody, and welcome to Legacy Sentai Genji Cast, your weekly look into the wonderful world of Tokusatsu. I'm your host, Mike, and this week I am joined by Liam and Larissa. Rob. And today we are looking at episodes five and six of Garo, The One Who Shines. I will not butcher the Japanese pronunciation of this show any further. Professional. Foul. Okay. <laughs> How so. dare. Anywho. Everyone glare at him. Disdain and judgment. Ooh. So. Do you act like that'd be the first time anyone has done this? I mean, you keep the like theme going. It'd be like the first time that somebody's cell phone went off while we were taping. Um, <laughs> you folks know the level of professionalism you can expect on this channel. So. I can actually talk this time. Yes, you can. I'm no, like, don't, uh, do I'm that. Like, don't do that. Don't do that. A great person audience. Maybe like I like you. <laughs> so because I like you don't mean I won't cut you. <laughs> That's how you show love. So there's a t-shirt on BrucePritchard.com you need to get. It says just because I love you doesn't mean I like you. <laughs> um so anywho, uh today we're looking at episodes five and six of Garo, the one who shines. Uh we've uh, obviously Myself, Will, Rob, we've already seen episodes one through four. This is Larissa's first interaction with Garo in any way, shape, form, or fashion. in, completely cold. So, what is your first impression of Garo in, in general? It looks great. Mm -hmm. Like, visually, it is super appealing. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the visual effects are on point. The costumes are really great. Just the, the way the sets are, I, I really like the way it looks. Okay. So aside from it being visually stunning, which is not a good thing on this show, <laughs> what, what else do we think about it? I really enjoyed it. Really like, enjoyed just it? coming into it completely blind, not expecting anything, I immediately really enjoyed it. I really like the characters from the get-go. Mm -hmm. I like the chemistry between the characters, like the, the main three guys. Mm -hmm. And I love their coats. They have these really great long leather coats that I want, because they're just really stylish. <laughs> but I'm, I'm really enjoying it so far. It still has, like, that kind of... Power Rangers feel to it, but it, it, I don't know, it looks great, it works together great. I'm having a lot of fun. I saw you flinch a little bit when she said Power Rangers feel. <laughs> Just a little bit. What? She was a bad thing, I was trying to think. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> making her don't hurt reactions. yourself, Zach. That... <laughs> <laughs> yes, folks, we are, we are full of, of um, well, some of us are full of alcohol, and um, <laughs> I shouldn't say full of, I've had some, uh, <laughs> as has Will by the looks of things, and I don't know if Rob has imbibed or not. Not yet. Not okay. yet. Stay after, tuned for after next this, week. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and we all, are all full of Chinese food at the moment. So, um, episode five was a continuation from episode four. We basically have the monster, the cowboy horror that's jumping through speakers and such, and they finally figure out a way to track him. They basically put a magical homing beacon on him where he turns into a ball of light that they can see as it travels through speakers. Um, and, and power lines, hey, Reminds me of Livewire from Supergirl. That's what it reminded me <laughs> of. To say, yeah. But no, um, honestly, I thought he was talking about something to trap it. Not trap that, it. That's the funny part is when she when she hands him this thing, says use it on him, and something to the effect of this will stop him or something like that. Yeah, yeah. just see where he goes. <laughs> yeah. I feel like because you know, the whole thing was just like I thought that was supposed to trap him or something or keep him from jumping into yeah. like the stuff, and it was like yeah. well, when she hands it to him, that's what she like the way she says yeah, it. That's what she, she makes it. you think he believes. Yeah. Like, no, 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 you just kind of see where he goes. <laughs> still got to chase him, though, afterwards. So. Can't take away all the fun. <laughs> all right. I appreciate that, though, that this is a case of the monster that doesn't want to fight. Yep. That amuses me, because you don't see that in a lot of these shows, where he's like, no, I just I just need to eat humans. That's all. That, that's right. all I, I have to do. I don't care about do. you. I don't care I don't, about you at all. I don't have to fight. I just have to eat. And, and you see that very infrequently in shows like this, where you have the monster of the week who's like, no, if I fight you, I get stabbed. I don't want to fight you. I just leave me alone. I want dinner. And, um, you know, um, I'm a fan. <laughs> well, Actually, I, mean, I like. I kind of like the pacifist monster for for a yeah. change. Well, and given the choice between getting stabbed and eating, yeah, uh, I will always pick eating. Um, uh -huh. Then episode six, we wind up with the uh, the pick of destiny. I mean. Um, <laughs> We wind up basically with a guy who has a uh, magical guitar pick that uh, somehow <laughs> lures in, attracts, what have you, horrors, and makes them stronger whenever he plays. Uh, so he winds up uh, 
playing a song that just has one horror, basically the dusty roads of horror. He's a big <laughs> fat guy that shouldn't be able to move as well as he does. I mean, it's, the, it's like, you know, it, it, it's, it's the dirty roads, if you will. Um, or if you prefer the, if you prefer the, uh, the Sammo Hung of horror. I don't care. Um, but, well, with the amount of wire work, you could never get dusty in a wire rig, I imagine. Um, but, you know, there's, the, you have this horror that winds up engaging our bag, our, our heroes rather a couple of three times throughout the episode, uh, and eventually they use the guy's audition uh, and recording session as a trap to lure in all the horrors and uh, fight them. Uh, the one thing that amused me, because I, like, like I've said before going through this, I haven't watched this series in a really long time. Um, it's about four years old at this point. Um, I do not remember it taking this long for Zen. Junya Ikeda's character. I do not remember it taking this long for him to get his costume. Yeah, I'm still waiting for him to get his costume. Yeah, yeah we, we, he is the only Makai Knight in the series to not transform yet, and we're six episodes in. We He's are, the punk dude, right? All I'm, saying yes. yeah. all, I'm saying, all I'm saying is this, man. Like, if they do a reveal in episode 10, that suit better be fucking badass. I mean, it is a badass suit. But I just hope we finally the wait. <laughs> I'm so sorry I didn't get to see Mechanic guy in a suit. That was a... I just hope that when he finally puts the suit on, he's a little more useful than he has been. Yeah. He feels a little useless lately, a little more in the way than he does be helping. A little so, bit, yeah. a little bit. I think it's because he doesn't have the his suit yet. Well, even without the suit, he seems to just be causing more trouble than it's worth. Getting himself hurt. You know, like you know, episode uh, six. Was it three? I believe it was. Or he yeah, was, three. Where he, uh, he was getting lured in by the naked chicks, and he's like, "Oh no, I was here hunting this guy." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Oh wait, wait, wait." <laughs> was like, no, I was hunting. I, I was like, "I had a, I had a job to do." Yes. yes. That seems in character. Yeah. yeah so it, it, I feel it. like even even without the armor, just him as a character, and it might just be because you are focusing on the guys with armor a little more. He does mm. seem a little more in the way with what's been going on, anyways, um, than some of the other guys. So. One thing that is that has always struck me interesting about Garo in general, this particular season though, uh, very specifically, is they're never going to give us an origin story for this armor for these folks. So oh. don't don't expect that. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. They don't. Yeah. No, you, we never actually get the backstory for how each of them necessarily got the armor. I think we actually do get the backstory for Yuga, but the other two we don't necessarily get it. No. Um, and the we don't see. A, well, let me rephrase that. We don't see it in the context of the story as it's ongoing. Um, okay. so the, they all already have their powers. All of them do, including, uh, Zen, which is the Garo, or is the knight form, rather, of, of, uh, Junia Kata's character, whose name escapes me. Um. <laughs> We're terrible with names. Though. Yeah, Tucker. Is <laughs> and I've never heard it, so. uh, But we know that he becomes Zen. I think it's Zen the Flame Knight. Um. But sounds great. No, it's, it's awesome. But <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm not sure that I'm not sure the mic picked you up well. I don't know what you're talking about. I ain't saying nothing. Anyway, um, you need better friends. <laughs> so, anywho, at least better ones uh, will show up. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> He was talking to you, Andrew. Um, <laughs> so, I kid, I kid. All right. So, um, so uh, at any rate, we, we know that we know that they all got their powers. Yeah. yeah. I do find it. Thing. Do you hurt me? Oh. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Why? So, we've we've I'm only seen now. we've only seen Guy, which is our oh, archer. Yes. We've only seen him transform once mm -hmm. in six episodes. Yep. We've seen Garo transform in basically every episode. Briefly, yeah. Um, yeah, this last one was really quick. Oh, yeah. That's actually almost par for the course. Yeah. Really? Um, so so you're kind of uh, super uh, and except for like the second, um, except for the second episode when he was going against the Mado, the, the Mado horror. Yeah, he was in the super yeah, because they mm -hmm. actually had like the, the CGI fight scene, which was actually really good. Yeah. Oh. So without going into this, in case because we may go back and watch some of the other Garo series, without going into too much specifics, they never actually use this plot device in this series. But in the original Garo series from 05, whenever they transform into the costume, mm -hmm. a counter appears on screen that says 99.9 uh, .9 and starts counting down. And that timer stays on screen the entire time they're transformed, every mm -hmm. single time. If the timer expires, bad things happen. So oh. the, Gar the, the Makai Knight powers do have a time limit, so to speak. Oh, I see. They never really hit it in this one. Mm -hmm. It's just implied they're never going to stay in the form for long. Gotcha. Un unless they absolutely have to kind of thing. Unlike the original Ultraman, which completely explains that. 
Well, like the original Ultraman, where he has a color timer, and it's as he takes damage and as he stays in Earth's atmosphere, and hmm. and should his uh, should his timer ever go out, then Ultraman will never arise again. So said the English narrator. Um, <laughs> More so dramatic. So so untrue, but anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, give us something out of this pair of episodes, Will, that you liked. Something that stood out to you. The further development of the story with the captain. Ah, I like Inho. the whole I like the I like the whole development with yes, we are really horrible with names. <laughs> I'm really I'm like trying. The, uh, I really like the development with uh it with Yo Inho. Inho. Oh, yeah. What? Inho. And the sad thing is I know a lot of Japanese too. And I apparently fucked that word just all to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I would do for that fun. We might just separate us. No, no, no! He's touching me. Sorry. We went downhill fast. Sorry. So Inho, not that captain, not that captain. Inho, I like the way because we were talking about whole the whole, and you actually get to see them making. Yes. Making the motto or because you know, screw it, I've already said it, so you know what? She becomes one in the, in the second part of that episode. It's, everybody knows that we, if you don't already know that Denzi Castor will give away spoilers, stop. It happens. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and plus, because we were, because they kept, in the episode before, they kept alluding to it in like a dream thing. Right. And then in the, the beginning of this episode, they do the same exact thing, but it's more like a, a vision of how it all finally just right. comes to comes to fruition and I actually like that aspect of it too so, so she's a recurring character she's yes been here mm -hmm. from... so she's been here from episode one yep. okay so something you enjoyed out of these two episodes what do you in think that case was? I really like the rocker dude from from the second episode from rock the sheen the one who was actually using the pick to, to play his song I like the fact that he was like quote unquote like the villain because he's like the conduit of these bad things that are happening but he's actually just a dork he's just trying to get his song so his mother will be proud of him or i'm i'm not sure if the mother was dead or not i couldn't tell but he's his but he's doing he's doing great he's just kind of having problems but he was i really enjoyed him as a character i liked his, his i liked was, his uh, chemistry with I think his mother may have been like dying or something from just we just remember, she like, was dying. We just didn't know if she was actually dead from yeah. the dialogue. It was kind of like, no, uh, like, don't die, don't die, and it's kind of it escalating mm -hmm. with that. So it's hard to tell if the escalation. If she's just really sick, she or if she's dying, dead. Or, 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 but they kind of like when at the end when he like put he picks up the pick and, mm -hmm. and Shin just goes like, "This is nothing my mother would be proud of." Would yeah. When he was like, I was just like, "Is that telling her that she's dead?" Yeah, or is I it, think he can make the assumption either way. Either way, she's. Either way, it's not great. Yeah, either way, and she's he has not doing problems. So, but I, I liked his chemistry with Yuga. They had like their bro moment, so I, I enjoyed him. I enjoyed that character. Okay. How about you, Rob? Uh, uh, like well, like a little more in depth into the uh, the Inho story. Um, mm -hmm. It was. Um, I'm kind of kind of glad and kind of hate that they didn't like extend that a little bit more. I expected that to go on for a few more episodes, as far as the kind of the internal battle. Dragging it out yeah. a little bit. Um, so uh, I was kind of surprised to see them kind of go full bore into that for a little bit. So from here, it's interesting to me to see if she'll. If she'll retain this, or if she'll find some way to, I guess, come back, if you will, from being a motto, if they'll find a way to do that, or if she'll, if she'll be kind of like one of the instances of she'll be kind of come self aware, still be a motto whore, but helping them kind of thing. So it'll be interesting to see if she's able to kind of do that at some point, or if she's just going to be a motto whore on the other side from now on. So. I remember when I was first watching this series, and, and like I got to this point, I remember sitting there going, wow, that was quick. Yeah. <laughs> I remember feeling like, this is really rushed. And, and and I'm used to, I'd seen the first two Garo series up to this point, and those are kind of slow rolls. Yeah. So for this one to chug along that quick kind of kind of took me back a little bit. I'll say my favorite part of these two episodes is the show remembers what happened yesterday. Um, a, lot of, a lot of tokusatsu shows flat do not do that. Um, because if you look at it, they're not, they're not the height of serialized fiction. Um, what? Yeah. Uh, Super Sentai is horrible about it. Um, Kamen Rider used to be really bad about it, although now Kamen Rider basically is a serialized show. Um, but Garo really 
will remember little things and drop hints and things like that along the way. Yes, they will foreshadow the hell out of some stuff. They've actually done some foreshadowing already in this for the end of the series. Oh, nice. Um, but one of the things that that I appreciated was um, was uh, Zen getting his payback when they have to. They need a distraction, and they're like, "Oh, don't worry, I got it covered." And he shows Ryuga out into the middle of everybody, went from hiding, uh, and just looks at him and he's like, eh, and then runs off. Payback for shoving him in front of a car in front of a steakhouse in a couple episodes back. So, you know, I, I love the fact that it's just something as simple as, you know, they'll hold a grudge through two or three episodes, and they'll remember little things that happen. So I, I always enjoy seeing that out of a show. I love serialized uh, stories. I like long form stories. Uh, we were actually looking earlier and talking about old school movie serials. That's one of the reasons I love those. Uh, my wife hates them. <laughs> she, hates, she hates serialized Aww. television shows. Like I love Arrow and Flash and Legends and all those shows. She can't stand oh the serialized nature of those shows. She, she would rather watch something like Criminal Minds or There's NCIS. Like a, like a case, oh, of yeah. case of the Week. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. yeah. But anywho, to each their own. Um, we do... Yeah, well... Well, we both like movies. That we have a, a good common bond on movies, though, which is why we have a show here on the network from time to time. So, what's something out of these that you just looked at and went, "Oh God"? What? What, what was what was your Sailor Moon moment of these two episodes? What? <laughs> it's just what? it's <laughs> it's so that Will uh, will get goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> I said goodbye. Uh, <laughs> 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 Like tuxedo mask shirts, people. <laughs> rabble, rabble. rabble. <laughs> anyway, this you man, were saying. <laughs> this man cannot stand Sailor Moon. Shout out to. Uh, it's not that. It's just. Shout out to our friend Brian Cape, who every time he works on on Will's computer, leaves some sort of Sailor Moon bomb behind. <laughs> yes. Hence the reason I'm glad I worked on my own this time. I built my own this time. He actually, he actually worked on Will's computer once and then rigged it so that every time Will started the computer up, it would play the opening video from Sailor Moon. <laughs> oh my gosh! No, no, it wasn't that. It was, uh, was it? it was the, uh... Or was it the transformation sequence? It was, no, it was, uh, the, the, the I'm Blue song for Sailor Mercury. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh. That was like every single time. Every single time like, he booted up his computer, it would play it. That is amazing. <laughs> So, That's truly using one's power for the best. <laughs> the best. No. So it's well, not. what's something out of these two episodes that just didn't sit well with you? Honestly, yeah, the speed the speed in which they you know basically became the horror. That I mean, I like the transition of it. I like the whole thing where uh, I'm just gonna call him Yoshi for short because I can't remember the last half of his name or how to pronounce it. Yoshi Tommy. Yoshi, huh? Yoshi Tommy. Did you tell me? What did you tell me? Okay. Dude, bro, well, that, I need to... that I liked for the two seconds that he was around. <laughs> Basically, it was the one in the relationship we know. But uh, I liked how they did the whole reveal that she's turning, she's turning. Boom, she's turned. And the whole hit, because it was showing from his perspective, and then it shows her normally. I did like that, but like, I didn't like the way that it was rushed in there. There was more drama to be had out of that. Yeah, yeah. So. they could have done a lot more with that. That was about. That was really the only thing I, I didn't really like. Was just like you guys were saying earlier. I wish they had. They could have done so much more with that. But it just seems like we want to go ahead and get get this out of the way. So we're gonna get it out of the way. Hmm. How about you, Larissa? Was there anything about this you looked at and was kind of like, eh? Not really, actually. I super enjoyed most of it. Like, coming into the middle of the whole story was a little bit weird because a lot of stuff was going on, and I'm like, who are you? What are you doing? <laughs> what is going on? Why are you eating people? I don't <laughs> so, uh, it took me a little while to play catch-up, but I think once I figured out what was going on, it was, it was really good. You realize I now have to be on a quest to find a tokusatsu show that she does not like. <laughs> good luck, friends! This is my, my bread and butter! <laughs> this, uh, no, <laughs> like that, this, whole, this whole genre and style is just, ah, I live for it. I love it. I'm just saying that. <laughs> Why? It's the great. Having so much fun. Aren't you having fun doing this? Optimizer 3 is really, really weird. I don't know how much of that I have. Help. <laughs> and it looks, and it, it looks like trash on top of that. <laughs> Andrew, that helps. Yes. You made me watch Turbo. That was rough. <laughs> but it had, it had Adam in it, so that was yeah, okay. I'm remembering correctly. I think I watched 10 minutes of an episode of that. 
He's got the one dude that has to drink all the water, and the one dude that's supposed to be the devil with the rapier, and then the yellow guy. Yeah, I watched with the Buzz minutes. Sawyers. Yeah, I watched about ten minutes of that. I was like, I'm done. So, anyway, I'm already on board. I'm ready. <laughs> ready. Bus I'm ready to roll. Yeah. It sounds more intriguing than it really is. He's, oh, already, no. he's already envisioning his next cosplay. Um, so, I do want to say one thing about the Inho thing. I really enjoy the fact that they have not shown her what she looks like, like as, as a whore yet. Like, they, you yeah. see her through the guy's vision, but it's all, like, distorted. And then you see her as a shadow, and so you see the shape, but you never actually see, like, a full shot of her. True. Yeah, so. they, they are kind of sitting on that a little bit, mm -hmm. so that's pretty cool. So I thought that was, that was pretty neat. I'll kind of piggyback that a little bit, you know, that's from seeing the other episodes so far, they did kind of go through her storyline super quick. Like, here she is, don't trust him, I trust him, might be, be turning a whore and she's a whore. So I mean, it kind of goes, like, each each episode so far has been just a progression of her storyline, it seems. So it does seem kind of quick from seeing the other episodes, but I do think that they've done a good job, just, you know, like you said, with... with hiding her true form yet as far as that's concerned so if they're going to drag out something it's kind of nice that they are kind of holding that back because um, you do see just from the shadow and from his blurred vision that it is kind of a, a dramatic change you know, mm -hmm. as far as far as how she looks so but from here i'm just hoping that you know like i said they'll, they'll do something different as far as where she goes as a horror if you'll it's a quick question of someone sliding into the story is mm -hmm. it, do we know why this is happening to her or is this just something that is happening they haven't said it yet okay the one thing that that uh, that never dawned on me originally and didn't dawn on me now until you just mentioned your own. And that is, they they do like a sev a fairly severe shift in her personality every single episode. Mm -hmm. Like, because the first episode, we basically just see her. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then the next episode, she is the distrustful captain of SG-1 who is going to protect and serve. Yep. Okay. Then the next episode is... <laughs> Maybe I should trust this guy. Okay. And the next episode is I trust Shoot this him. guy. Yeah. And oh, no, then, okay. and then it becomes. I know yeah. I trust you. I'm going to kill you yeah. as soon as I can, when I reckon. Yeah. yeah. The episode has been a dramatic turn as far as she can, mm. she's concerned. That's why it's been kind of interesting to see the six episodes so far because everything's been like boom, 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 boom. Yeah. So. While everyone else has actually been fairly gradual. Yeah. I'm just talking about just, in, her, just yeah. her in particular. Yeah. So I'm talking about. The only thing that I would say that I, I really the the rush of the Inho storyline is the biggest negative I have on the show thus far. Um, visuals are fantastic. Music mm -hmm. is outstanding. Oh, music is so good, guys. Um, well, you missed yeah. all the you missed oh, all the thanks. Western you music. Got oh yeah, you got clothes on you. you. You got to miss all the Western okay. music of the early episodes. They they, they have like this. <laughs> yeah, they have, have, have almost yeah, this right. country that's Western cool. twang to some of the early episodes. Yeah. yeah, it was actually oh, one. Of the, it was actually one of the main reasons why I compared a good bit of the. The character bases from actual old westerns, oh. so like spaghetti westerns. Neat. So, and there's there's so much to love about the show, but that story, which seems like it could have had a lot more to it and could have been pulled out a little bit more. I remember by the end of the series going, okay, that I, I get it, but I don't remember why I thought that way. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see if I think that way again upon rewatching it. Uh, it's what thirty nine episodes? No, it's like twenty something. Yeah, um, it's low 20s. Gar the Garo series is, are usually around the 20 to 25 episode mark. They're not long at all. That's like perfect length for a series, in my yeah. opinion. Okay. Yeah, they're happier shows. So, what are we looking forward to going forward? Because we've already established we're in, we're in Garo, the one who shines through the end. <laughs> so, what do you think? What, what are you looking forward to, Will? More development with, with uh, you know, just for the simple fact that I want to see if, like, Rob was saying earlier, like whether she becomes a horror and then suddenly wants to find a way to stop being, to basically find a cure and then like ends up helping the, the Makai Knights throughout that throughout conflict the between humanity and horrorness, something like that. And uh, how I want to I want to see dude get a suit. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see dude. Just... I want to see how the other guys look. Because I want to see what the suit looks like. I, I Does could... Gun Girl have a type of suit or is she No, like... she's a Makai no, priestess. No, no, no. Okay. The, the priests don't get suits. Okay. I will say this. I do remember watching it, and when you, when you finally Rina? get the moment where Rina? all three Rina? of them transform together for the first time, I remember sitting there, and it was like a fist pump moment. It was like, <laughs> yes! <laughs> yes! Oh, man. So, 
Um, and I think this is the first Garo series to actually have three Makai Knights in the same show. Up to this oh. point, they've had, like, I think the average, they've done, like, two. Oh, okay. And they've had other Makai Knights show up in movies. So, what's something you're looking forward to in this for us? Uh, I'm mostly the seeing what Zen does. Seeing Zen actually be useful. And also everything that Archer Duke does. He's great. Why is, uh, go ahead. <laughs> Why is it you, your favorite character in the show is the, the complete asshole? I think she has a type. I really enjoy the asshole characters. Which are, like in Yu-Gi-Oh, Kaiba is my boy, and uh, it's like, like, like anybody like, else seeing a pattern? <laughs> and and like Tuxedo Mask, I love him because he's a jerk to Usagi when he first meets her. It's like the the asshole characters that are still on the hero side, like that. Those that's like kind of my trope. That's why I really enjoy. So, and they also, he's got great style. He's got the glasses, he's got the coat, he's got the bow. He's, it's cool. It's cool. <laughs> <laughs> so what are you looking forward to? The before? raging dick. <laughs> I didn't same. say he wasn't. Uh, same as last time, the same as we've already said. Just a little more as far as now that they've kind of progressed into a story so quickly to see mm-hmm. how they take that from here. Um, and also to see Zen be less useless. <laughs> yeah. Zenby, less useless. I've I've seen all of Go Kaiju. You've seen some of Go Kaiju, right? Mm-hmm. So you know the thing is, is Junya Kada can put on a hell of, of an action sequence with, without a costume, mm-hmm. without a stunt double. So and we've seen a little bit of that, yeah. but we haven't seen it full bore yet. Uh, well, it we have seen it yet. <laughs> eventually. So, I mean, it's eventually. one would hope. Yeah, but I mean, it, it's one of those things where. I loved him so much as Gokai Silver, yeah. and going into this show, uh, uh, just the complete tonal shift from being the geek to the womanizer. Yeah. Oh my God. But uh, yeah, it, it's uh, myself. I'm trying. I'm, I'm looking forward to remembering why in the world I didn't mind the rushing into the story. <laughs> to be honest with you, um, but uh, I'm looking forward to, to seeing the the money shot again, though, where it's all three of them together transformed. That sounds that, exciting. Well, I mean, that's one of those things where when you watch shows like this and you watch movies like. Why do you watch the, the Super Sentai have a tradition of the Versus movie? Why do you watch the Versus movie where two teams team up? To see the, the shot where they all stand together transform. Hero the, shot! The multicolor yes. smoke explosion. Yes! yes. <laughs> it's the same reason, like, uh, I actually hold up... Forever Red was a fun episode, but it doesn't hit my probably my top ten even um, of, of team-up episode movies. It's the reason I love watching uh, the uh, uh, Kyuryu Go Busters team up because they brought back they brought back Zhu Ranger and Abba Ranger, which was the Japanese version of Mighty Morphin and Dino Thunder, yeah. so that all three dinosaur teams transformed oh, and fought together. Oh, oh man, it was uh, that sounds amazing. Um, <laughs> sounds pretty. Epic. They brought back the it actual, was. They brought back the actual actors for those too, didn't they? They brought back the the actual actors for Abba Red, Abba Blue, yeah. and for um, or Abara Red and Abara Blue, and then uh, Tyranno Ranger. Yeah, yeah. But the they had the guys in the suits for everything else. Yeah. And the guys in the suits, it was the original actors coming back and doing the voices. Mm-hmm. And they even shot updated versions of the morphing sequences was, oh for gosh. the two old heroes. That was amazing. Nice. What oh was hilarious, gosh. I'll find just the morphing sequence and we'll watch it here in a minute. Sounds great. Because um, what was hilarious about watching it was that um, uh, in America, they used the, di- uh, the they used the Zhu Ranger Dino Buckler toy as the morpher for the American Rangers. It literally was the toy. Oh my gosh. Well, it, because in Japan, they didn't have the original morphers anymore. They didn't have the props. Mm-hmm. They needed to find something to use. And as it turns out, the legacy morpher toys that came out in the States are so much higher quality than even the original prop was that they went Holy and crap. bought one of those, yep. mocked up new decals on it so yep. it would look like the, the ones from their show, yep. and they used the American toy in their movie. Yeah, because it works so, really well wow. because the, the back the of the legacy of cheese one and crackers, Cat. I need that risk. That. Told you. <laughs> um, but that those big that, that those big transformation team up things, that's something that I always look forward to in shows like this, and uh, you get one in this, so it should be a thing yet. <laughs> nope, no, you're fucked. All right. All right, folks, before, Avenge me. before Larissa bleeds out here on, on our YouTube channel, please remember, folks, uh, I think that wraps us up here for this episode. Please remember to check us out uh, on Facebook, facebook.com slash DenzyCaster. You can also check us out on Instagram. On uh, uh, We're on Instagram, we're on Periscope, we're on Twitter. You'll see all those addresses pop up when I'm done talking. Don't forget to check out Will & Company uh, Wednesdays on Chopsaki Cinema. Uh, so uh, I, I know that... Uh, 
Let's see, y'all have done a Hooray for Vengeance month. Y'all have done a Wu-Tang month. By the time this airs, Wu-Tang month will have come and gone. Um, so We're um, still, we're still kind of in the middle of uh, doing uh, 36 Chambers. Yeah, I, 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 we, like, so Josh got a new job, and it's a lot more hours mm -hmm. um, than yeah, he's usually used to working. Congrats, Josh. And Al. And, oh, no, I'm not knocking it. Al. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Don't you be adults, gosh. Al. <laughs> And, uh, <laughs> stop, Rob. I hate Cat. you, Rob. <laughs> Cat oh, is sharp and pointy. Oh, ah, too close to the situation. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, both of us have been really, really, really tired because the company I work for got bought by another company. You've been going through, uh, it's this whole thing that's just basically killing me. Real life has interfered Ew. in the typing schedule, so. How dare. Right, chances are you may end up seeing, depending on how things go, you may end up seeing some individual individual episodes from me or Josh. Pop and, up in the meantime. Yeah, pop up in the meantime of if we can't, if something comes up then we, we're not all available or I can't get anybody else who would like to come join. Gum tape, chances are you'll be seeing my ugly mug sitting like way too close to a camera. <laughs> <laughs> ah, right. It'll be okay for anyone that's out there that's seen Denzy Blitz. They're used to this because Denzy Blitz <laughs> is just me. So, well, folks, uh, real quick is because I've never done this before and I've done this before for other people, but is there anything you do online? I know you have a YouTube channel. I've seen it. It exists. I have the DeviantArt <laughs> where I put art sometimes, but that's about it. Okay. Uh... I know that you are part of uh, the South Carolina Ghostbusters. Yeah, I'm part of a few cosplay groups here in the Upstate. Um, South Carolina Ghostbusters is uh, one of the main ones. Uh, SC Upstate Heroes in uh, in here, South Carolina. I do Captain America, uh, Batman, uh, I do, do Mighty Morphin White, Kiba. I do that suit for that group as well. Also a member of the uh, Carolina Garrison 501st. I'm a foam trooper with them, so I'm, I got my hand in a little bit of everything. I, as far as I need to talk to you about that. <laughs> So I got no, my man, just, I've, been, I've been trying Nerds. to get as much information. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as much information or some somebody to help me like I guess you. I guess get you. into that. But yeah, if you thought, uh, you know, uh, we each group has our uh, our own Facebook page there. You can follow me a lot of my cosplay new stuff on uh, Instagram as well. Undertaker Bob U N D R T K O Bob. Because okay. yeah. it's and it's not that his favorite wrestler is the Undertaker. It's because yeah. he's an Undertaker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so. funny because my, uh, my, I have a cosplay page on Facebook. I don't update it as much as I should. It's six feet down cosplay. So. Oh, guys. Okay. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, folks, until next time, when we will have more of something, it will either be the show that you guys have picked for us to watch. Maybe it'll be more Garo. Maybe it'll be more Sailor Moon. Who knows? Ooh. Until then, I'm Mike. William. Marissa. Rob. Duncan. And we'll see you next time. Bye, you I'm I'm Denzel. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.